Welcome back to another episode of Organic Chemistry. Today we're going to talk about Aza Bayer Villager reactions and related reactions. But before we get into that, let's go through the practice problems that I assigned last lecture. So in this first problem, we start with indole, and we have to get to this 3-alkynyl indole. And so the route that I would propose for this is starting with DMF, we'll do a Vilsmeyer reaction and add a formal group to the 3 position of indole, which is the most nucleophilic site of addition under most conditions. Then we could do a Wittig reaction, and then we could do a Cory Fuchs reaction so that we can end up getting this alkyne product through a 1 2 shift. Now, in this next problem, we start with this alpha diazo ketone. And so, what we have to do here is we have to do an interesting Wolf rearrangement reaction. And so, first, we're going to go through a ketene, which can then get hydrolyzed by water, forming this carboxylic acid product. Finally, if we wanted to get this amide product here, we can use pibop and DMAP in the presence of diisopropylethylamine and diethylamine, and since diethylamine is our nucleophile, we're going to get this amide as our product. Now in this final problem, we have a multi-step synthesis starting with acrolein and an alkyne. And so initially what's going to happen is we're going to undergo a lithium 1-2 addition to this aldehyde, giving us this, this allylic alcohol product. We can then undergo oxidation with PCC. If you're curious, you could actually use a much milder oxidant such as manganese dioxide to oxidize this type of alcohol. Um, allylic alcohols and especially like doubly substituted propargilic allylic alcohols would be very easy to oxidize to the corresponding carbonyl. However, PCC should be able to do the job. If you ran into issues with this, you could use DMP. Then you could do another Wittig reaction to get a Cory Fuchs type prod product, which can then undergo uh, lithiation and 1-2 shift to give us this ene ine ine and upon final hydrogenation, we can get this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbon substituted benzene product, this hexyl benzene. Now, this is a lot of work to just get hexyl benzene, but the point is uh, proper hydrogenation will just hydrogenate all this. Now, let's get to today's material, Aza-Bayer-Villager reactions and related reactions. So, none of them are actually called Aza-Bayer-Villager because they all have unique names depending on the slight variance that they are. But the sense of this reaction is that it's like a Bayer-Villager for the most part. Uh, except they have nitrogen. And so the common theme today is going to be nitrogen-based 1-2 shifts. So some of the reactions we're going to discuss include the Beckman rearrangement, the Semler-Wolf reaction, the Schmidt rearrangement, the Stieglitz rearrangement, the Demjanov rearrangement, and the tifano demjanov rearrangement. So let's look at the Beckman rearrangement. So this is a reference that is the original paper where Beckman reported this transformation. And so using a Lewis acid or an activated oxime or just an acid, we can make this hydroxy into a good leaving group, and then through a 1-2 shift of this oxime derived from a ketone, so this would be a ketoxime, the R group is able to shift onto the nitrogen, and if we move the lone pair of electrons from the imenium onto this carbon, what we're going to end up getting is a nitrilium, or a nitrilium, which is just like an alkylated nitrile. Now it's worth noting that in these reactions, there's been competition experiments where they'll add in two different oxymes, and you can actually see exchange of the R groups between the different ketoxemes that are used. And so this suggests that there's a little bit of free carbocation, so there would be like an R carbocation floating around. Now, if you have a nitrilium, and you can react this with various nucleophiles, so water would be a nucleophile that could quench this, and then you get your amide as a product upon um, just ketoenol tautomerism. Now, some examples of Beckman rearrangement include this one shown here. I just want to briefly say, uh, Reaxis was not helpful for finding these. There's like a billion papers and a billion examples using very obscure reagents such as zeolites. Um, I have a rant about this in the Discord, and if you haven't joined the Discord yet, you might be interested in joining some of the discussions on topics such as this, which we have there. So I almost lost my mind finding these, but nonetheless, I found some useful examples so that I could teach you this today. So we take this ketoxime, in this case thionyl chloride is the activator, and then we undergo a 1-2 shift. Instead of having an oxygen, like a Bayer Villager here, we just have the nitrogen, just through the shift process. Now, for a lot of these reactions, they may have differing regioselectivity than the Bayer Villager. So in the Bayer Villager, which I'll include a card to here, they, there's a very predictable trend of which R group will shift, depending on whether it's like a phenyl, how substituted it is, etc. But for some of the Aza derivatives, you actually have opposite regiochemistry. So in this case, this is actually following what we'd expect, because the quaternary center ends up shifting to the nitrogen. So that's actually okay. But in some of the examples that we'll see later, we won't have that being the case. So in this next example, we have an N-sulfonyl indole, which is a ketoxime. Now, they also had just an NH indole in this paper, but I've included this one because it just shows that there's some additional functional groups that are tolerated. 
And the neat thing here is they just use 5% catalyst loading of this perfluoropinacol as well as this boronic acid, which actually helps this rearrangement reoccur, uh, helps this rearrangement occur at room temp in a very short amount of time. Now, this is probably my favorite set of conditions for the Beckman rearrangement. I personally haven't tried this, but of all the reactions I've seen, this is extremely mild. However, this pinacol is a little bit obscure. But as you may or may not know, I'm quite a fan of hexafluoroisopropanol as a solvent, and so this organic catalyst definitely tickles my fancy. So another example is this paper here, where they take this amino ester derived uh, like oxime sulfonate, and what they do is, in the presence of strong acid, they liberate some of the free uh, sulfonyl hydroxylamine, which can then form a ketoxylamine, uh, a ketoxime here, and this can then undergo the same sort of Beckman rearrangement. Now the cool thing here is that this reagent just avoids the use of hydroxylamine derivatives right on their own and they get really good yields and some of the substrates are kind of interesting but it is somewhat limited. However this is just a JOC paper so that's probably fair enough. Okay so now let's talk about the Beckman rearrangement which is kind of like a modified version of the or the modified Beckman rearrangement, which is the sambler wolf reaction. So I quite like this reaction because what you can do is you can start with an enone, make an oxime from the enone, and then treating this with a strong acid or an activator, what you could do is through a process forming an aziridinium, you can then uh, form this alpha, beta, gamma, delta unsaturated imine, which can tautomerize to form an aniline. So this is a cool way to make a benzene ring that might not be super intuitive. You sometimes see these sorts of reactions with alpha beta unsaturated ketones with like palladium on carbon, and then you just heat the living daylights out of it, and then you get a phenol on the other side. But this is a cool reaction uh, that might be underutilized for synthesizing anilines. Now, a couple examples where this has been used in an impressive way include this total synthesis here, where you can see this, this oxime is converted to uh, the O-benzoyl oxime, and then through the rearrangement process, because there's still benzoic anhydride present, they actually form the N-benzyl product, which they then cleave in a subsequent step just using uh, basic uh, refluxing conditions. So this is quite a cool product. So this does tolerate a lot of functional groups, uh, and it's an interesting way to produce a benzene ring where it might be really challenging to otherwise. Like if you look at this benzene ring here, this looks like it would be a nightmare to synthesize and then build this 6-4 ring system. So it's quite impressive that they were able to do it this way. So another reaction that accomplishes the same transformation is the use of palladium on carbon in the presence of base. You can see that really high temperatures are required, kind of like the ones I was just mentioning for those of cyclohexenone. But in this case, uh, there's a method where they demonstrate that this can be done for a series of substrates. So if you want to check that out, here's a reference. Now the next reaction is the Schmidt rearrangement. Now this is one that probably too many of you won't be interested in doing, as it uses hydrozoic acid. So this doesn't work with azide on its own typically, you need to use uh, azide in the presence of an acid, usually sulfuric acid. And so the way that this works is first azide can attack, because we have several different resonance forms of the azide group, we can actually just displace hydroxide as a leaving group. This is this is uh, like Zwitter ionic, uh, even though this is neutral here, you can appreciate that you could draw this several different ways. This looks a little bit like the Breslau intermediate in terms of what you can see with NHC type carbenes. Um, now we haven't talked about NHC carbenes, nor have we talked about the Breslau intermediate, but if you've seen uh, this sort of chemistry elsewhere, you can probably appreciate why this hydroxy group is eliminated. So this kind of looks like the first reaction where we then get a nitrilium, which can then undergo hydrolysis to afford the amide. But this is uh, this is also very close to resembling the Bayer-Villager, just with hydrozoic acid. So one example here uh, shows this shift. Now this is a case where it's probably not uh, as intuitive. Here you get the NH in the secondary position where you have a tertiary position directly adjacent. This probably wouldn't be what you'd expect. However, this is alpha to a carbonyl, and so that would be the most stable carbocation, so that could be rationalized for why that shifts. Now in this next example, they treat this uh, N-benzyl ketone with sodium azide in sulfuric acid, and they get a racemate because as this can open from one side or the other, you could get the ketone on either side. So still a cool reaction, but there wasn't too many uh, super interesting examples that I could find. Um, a couple here that were somewhat noteworthy include the treatment of this ketone. Now in this case, uh, again, the secondary, uh, rather the, the secondary position does undergo the 1-2 the shift, while this tertiary center is ignored, and there's no uh, electron stabilizing group. So this is like different regiochemistry than I would have predicted. 
Um, additionally, this compound, piperidinone hydrate as the HCl salt, was able to be converted to this lactam in good yield. So the next reaction that I'm going to discuss is the Stieglitz rearrangement. And so the way that this works, it's kind of like the first reaction where we protonate or activate this hydroxy group as a leaving group. Um, this can then undergo a 1-2 shift, displacing the, the Lewis acid activated oxygen, giving us an imine uh, or an aminium, depending on whether or not it's protonated. Now, I could not find very many good examples of this in the literature. Uh, they tended to not have very good chemo selectivity or functional group tolerance. And most of this chemistry is so old that it doesn't show up in SciFinder or Reaxis. So I'll include a bunch of references to some examples of like azides, uh, BF3 activation, etc. These didn't have that many really good examples. There's only one kind of interesting example that I thought to include here, which is in the total synthesis of lycopodine. And so what they do here is they make an N-chloroamine, just using N-chlorosuccinamide. Then upon treatment with silver tetrafluorate, tetrafluorborate in benzene, they get this imenium, which can then undergo reduction with sodium cyanoborohydride to afford this final product. Now, I believe that this is the aminium that forms, but if you disagree and you think the aminium would be formed elsewhere, you could comment down below. Now, the next reaction is the Demjanov rearrangement. And so the way that this works is this is a non-stabilized primary amine. This undergoes treatment with nitrous acid to form a diazonium, which can then undergo a 1-2 shift, displacing nitrogen as a leaving group, forming a secondary carbocation, which can then be trapped with water. Uh, this original paper didn't have a DOI to my knowledge, uh, and I asked people in the Discord and nobody was able to find a DOI. And so, again, there's very few good examples of this in the literature that I could find. However, I've got a couple that I'll show here. So in this case, they were able to undergo ring expansion to form uh, a four cyclohexane systems in a row from the steroid derivative. In this next example, another steroid derivative was able to be converted from a 6665 system to a 6765 system through ring expansion, and in this case, they trap it as the tertiary alcohol. And this was in E.J. Corey's synthesis of cortisatins. Now, the Tiffano demjanov rearrangement has way more examples in the literature. There is very many examples that I could find uh, on Reaxis. So here, in this case, we just form a diazonium, and this undergoes an easier 1-2 shift, where we get a cyclohexanone, in this case, as our product, but ketones more broadly tend to be the products that are formed. Now, occasionally, you'll get an epoxide instead, and there's some people who've looked at the effect of different systems on whether or not you get a 1-2 shift versus an epoxide formation, because you can imagine that this alcohol could easily displace this diazonium as a leaving group. But for the most case, for most cases in the, that I've seen, you still tend to get this 1-2 shift over an epoxide formation. So some examples uh, include this one paper, which has some really cool examples, um, and they use a really clever strategy to synthesize these. If you're interested in how they might make these, I'd encourage you to go and read the paper. And so in this case, you can see starting from a ketone derivative, they're able to undergo one, two shift to get this eight membered ring. And they were able to do this with uh, two different rings with different substituents, but the most noteworthy ones were methoxy groups, uh, fluorides, as well as acetates. Now, another example worth noting was the expansion of this ring, but because uh, this is an already like substituted center, Instead of just having one ring expanding, it comes at the cost of contracting the other. And so this is a cool way to convert a decalin system into uh, what resembles um, uh, a 7-5 system. These have a unique name, but their name escapes me at the moment. So in this case, the oxalic acid is just protonating the amine. It isn't doing any other chemistry. And then subsequently, they, uh, they're adding their nitrite, which is then get, just getting protonated by the oxalic acid, causing diazonium formation and Tiffano-Demjanov. Another example includes this one here. Now, the mechanism of this one, I believe, is just Lewis acid activation of the ketone. Then if you draw this in its resonance form, this TMS diazomethane, you can have the diazonium positively charged, the carbon negatively charged, and then this can undergo nucleophilic attack. However, they form this single product, the single diastereomer in a good conversion, and I couldn't necessarily rationalize why they get the regiochemistry that they do. Again, this secondary position with an alkoxy group, in my opinion, would be a better carbocation. So this should be the side that shifts, but in their case, they actually get the CH2 being the one that shifts. So uh, if you have any comments about that, I'd encourage you to comment down below or join the Discord where we have already discussed this. So for this lecture, I'd like to assign a few practice problems. First, uh, show what would form if you treated this uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketone with hydroxylamine and then heated it in palladium on carbon in the presence of sodium bicarb. Additionally, uh, just draw the intermediate. Now in the next problem, I want you to show what would form if you 
were to treat this with hydroxylamine and then thionyl chloride, what type of product would form? And then in this final problem, we have a total synthesis example where we have a multi-step synthesis and I just want you to fill in the blanks. This will test some of the chemistry that we learned previously in our video about sulfur illids, which I'll include a card to here. So hopefully this has been a useful video on Aza Bayer Villager type reactions. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and it would really help out the channel if you left a like and subscribed. Have a great day.